Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Connected by Community, brought to you by Ballantyne Capital Advisors. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony, and with me today is Cameron Cannon and Chef Michael with White Wine and Butter. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Thank you for joining us, uh, for joining us on this podcast. And before we get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself professionally and personally? Yeah, um, professionally, I've been a chef in this area for over a decade I've kind of considered myself one of the best kept secrets, uh, working in private establishments, uh, country clubs, and um, at the Western Point set for a good bit. Uh, and that was pretty fun, just being a chef in the area. Awesome. How about, per- are you from the area? I'm originally from Greenwood, South Carolina. Uh, I came up to this area right out of right out of high school and came straight to Greenville. The American dream is leaving Greenwood, coming to Greenville. <laughs> But uh, that worked out pretty well for me, you know, building a name for myself and uh, learning the culinary world up here in Greenville. Now, your wife's from New Orleans. Is oh, that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I got, got imported from New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm guessing you did a lot of visiting in New Orleans and, yes. and learned a lot about their food and culture out yes, there. Yes, yes. Funny thing about New Orleans is, you know, me being a chef, I always thought that, you know, I'm a chef. I can make anything. I can get on Google, look up a recipe. And uh, Cajun is a whole nother ballpark. Uh, I, I made a, a jambalaya for her and her family one time. And she just looked at me. She said, that's so cute, but that's definitely not a jambalaya. <laughs> and I was like, well, let me make you a gumbo then. And uh, she was just like, yeah, bro, that ain't it. <laughs> that ain't it. She's like, I got to get you down to New Orleans. So that was pretty stressful cooking for her family for the first time of, you know, a family of true foodies, Cajuns, like authentic style food. So uh, traveling down to New Orleans and learning the cuisine down there was amazing. That's probably the best thing that could have happened to me in my like culinary career. I'll say this. My wife and I visit New Orleans uh, twice. We would go back in a heartbeat. The food out in New Orleans has been the best I've I've ever had. Mm -hmm. The, The, just the culture, the food. Oh man, it was out of this world. They'll cook anything down there. They will. Anything. Um, They will. Our first stop down there was a gas station, and I was already blown away. I was like, "Really? This is this is what food tastes like at the gas station here?" So yeah. that's awesome. So tell you got a restaurant, right? Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how that got started and and kind of the your specialties there. Yeah, the Cajun Trattoria. Um, we stump we stump people on that or whatever. It was like, "What is that? What is that?" And I was like, "Well, you know, we started we started as a catering company, and uh, we were approached about opening opening our first restaurant in the uh, Cartwright Food Hall, and." It was just a combination of all of my experience uh, growing up, cooking, all the places I've worked and everything I've learned throughout the years. And adding that with New Orleans, everything I learned in New Orleans, which was my last stint of, you know, like culinary skill set or whatever. Um, And we just came up with it uh, on the spot when we met the owners of the food hall. He uh, asked us, he's like, so what kind of concept you guys think you want to do? And it was just like, uh, Cajun. Like definitely Cajun. Like at first I was like, I don't know, we can do tacos or burgers. And then like, we just looked at Joe's like, no, Cajun. Let's like, let's do Cajun food. So we definitely hopped on the Cajun train because we realized there wasn't much authentic Cajun food in the area. So we we definitely knew we could corner the market with that and take advantage of it, especially going out there and studying and learning how to make like true recipes and using my wife's family recipes mm-hmm combined with my family recipes. And it's just like, it's a no brainer. So you got the inside scoop on those recipes. Then, oh, huh? absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. So how, how long have you been doing that uh, up in Greer? Um, the restaurant's a baby. It's only about three and a half going on four months old. Okay. Um, but we've been, we've been working on it for like uh, probably about a year and a half, almost two years wow. prior to it. So we had plenty of time to work on it coming out of COVID. Like that was real tough. Mm. Oh, I'm sure. Um, we game plant heavy for it. And then like every time we would get close, we get another setback, another setback. And I mean, I, that was pretty stressful getting up to that point, uh, to open in a restaurant. And that's like a hundred percent. One of the most stressful things in the world to do is open a restaurant. <laughs> I can imagine. What, what about the catering business that you were doing before that? I guess, can you speak on that a little bit? Oh yeah. Kind of what you were doing there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the thing about the catering business is that, Uh, The name White Wine and Butter, I came up with that in culinary school. So for a long time in culinary school, I knew I wanted to do catering. I was always one of those people that said, I don't I didn't want a restaurant like I don't want a restaurant because 
that's part of the reason why I didn't work in restaurants as much. And I opted to do hotels and country clubs because I wanted to have a way of life. And I wanted to change like the narrative of, you know, working till two o'clock in the morning and then going back and opening up for breakfast or brunch at 6 a.m. You know, like I wanted to change those type of narratives in my personal life. So, you know, getting the opportunity to open my own thing is just like, all right, well, I can do catering. The problem with that was that I was working 80 plus hours for somebody else. So 80 hours a week on salary, work for somebody else. I can't put that time in to build my own thing. So, you know, my wife comes around and she like shows me the ropes. She was like, hey, dude, like you working a lot of hours and this is what you're making right now. So um, <laughs> got a little punch in the face. Yeah. She was like, you're super talented and we can definitely do this ourselves. And, you know, we just had to take that leap of faith. So, you know, already having a name established, already had my LLC. I just didn't do anything with it. I was doing like private dinners here and there, uh, birthday parties, something like that. But coming out of COVID, we really took that step to like put some stuff out there, put some pictures out there, put a menu together. And it it took off like wildfire. And like I was I was scared at first. I didn't think we'd be able to keep up, you know, like staffing and, you know, going into the restaurant and stuff like that or whatever. But we really we really made it happen. And the thing about the catering is that it's my baby. So like people always ask, like, what kind of food do you do in your catering? It's just like it's limitless. Like we can do anything like anything that I've studied before. We can take advantage of it. We can do it. And we we like to make it fancy. We like to make it we call it luxury catering because we take the time and we we sit down with our clients and, you know, build recipes, build flavor profiles and things like that and customize stuff. And like one thing we really like to do with our like our grace tables, um, we do custom grace tables. So like if you have a theme wedding, like I don't know, you like elephants, I'm gonna figure out how to incorporate some type of elephant or something in there, or do something that's gonna be like big on the grace table to like really make it special, really make it that that's your name on that grace table. Your grace table won't look like my last bride's grace table type stuff. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. I find I always find this interesting. What drove you to be a chef? Was it something that you always wanted to do or? No, I was greedy. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> um, man, now I come from a strong cooking family. Um, everybody in my family pretty much could cook. I have a couple couple cousins that can burn water, but <laughs> for the for the most part, like my mom, my mom could throw down in the kitchen. My dad can throw down in the kitchen, but my grandparents are the uh, the legends in their in their respective hometowns and stuff like that. Uh, my grandmother really held it down up in Philadelphia where she uh, she did like all the cooking for the churches. She did all the baking. Cheesecake was my favorite thing that she made. And, um, you know, I have a tattoo in her honor of, of her making cheesecake. So I have a cheesecake tattoo on my arm to honor her. And um, my grandfather, he did a lot of cooking back in the day as well. And he's just a, like a local legend in McCormick, South Carolina, uh, specializing in his hash, his barbecue, his grill. I'm actually next in line to inherit the grill Uh-oh, from my okay. grandfather. There so, um, yeah, man, like very Just, strong cooking yeah. family. Ingrained in you. <clears throat> yes. And I, I definitely wanted to be the one who could take it to the, the next level. And, and I was just like, well, I mean, everybody does it. They do it for love and passion and fun, which is great. But like we're, we, we, we got to a point where it was like, we can actually turn a profit in this and like, we can be like super successful and like, with food, like, cause food is, food is family, you know, like that, that gathers people around, you know, food's everything. It is. Um, I'm originally from Philadelphia. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheesecake is one of my all time favorite, uh, desserts. Um, my grandma also made one of the best cheesecakes I'll ever eat. So mm-hmm. it's, we have something in common. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you are famous because you are. On the Food Network channel. I am. <laughs> so could I you am. just tell us a little bit about that experience? Uh, yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've interviewed uh, several times for uh, Food Network. Fun, fun fact, um, in culinary school, I interviewed a couple times for the show called uh, Food Court Wars. And the funny thing about that is like me and my partner at the time, uh, N- Natasha, a uh, girl I went to school with, uh, like we're like really good friends in culinary school. Um, 
when we was going through the interview process, they was asking us all these questions like, what what do you hate about your partner? What what does your partner do to make you mad? And we was just like, man, I don't know. We just want to cook and win or whatever. And like they eventually like we we were working on a menu and all this stuff for the show. My chef was super supportive about it at the time. And they basically told us like, y'all not enough drama for TV. Like oh. you you probably have the talent, but you're not enough drama for TV. So that kind of like soured me on it for a while. But uh, you know, fast forward, you know, this year where, you know, our catering's popping, our restaurants buzzing, things like that. Uh, Food Network started scouting me. That's what they told me. It's like they were scouting us. So we started getting emails. My wife gives me a call. She was like, guess who I just got off the phone with? And I was like, I don't know, the mayor or somebody. She's like, Food Network. And I was like, for real? And I was like, what are they talking about? Because, like, I'm not trying to do nothing that I don't, that I'm not going to, like, have to be myself or whatever. And that was, like, my first thing. I was like, if I can't be myself, I don't want to do it. And then she was like, no, it's like a legit show, like a good show. Like we need to talk to them. So my goodness, dude, I did so many interviews with them. Like they have a very strict screening process. Um, yeah, like very, very <laughs> deep screening process. Like I could, I can go to it a bit. Um, at, my show hasn't aired yet. We are, we're still waiting on the release where we can like really go in deep into it and like talk about it. But like, as it's going to be on TV. It's it's going to be on TV. Like everybody was excited about Could it. Could you name the show or are you not allowed to? Um, Sure. It's, yeah. it's Guy's Grocery Games. Awesome. Yeah. That's nice. one of my favorite. Yeah. Like yeah. Guy, man, that dude is cool. Like, <laughs> I was going to ask how is Guy. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's cool. Like I, I'll tell you one thing about him. When when we were shooting for the show, um, I'm I'm outside in, in my little trailer. We, we get our own trailer and all kind of stuff too. Like super cool. And like this big F-1000 pulls up like, supercharged or whatever and he rolls down the window i'm getting i'm getting mic'd up and all this stuff right now he rolls the window down he was like you better be ready and i was like me <laughs> you pointed at me and told me i need to be ready or whatever and i was like man i was like really one of the coolest things though you know just like guy talking to you and i didn't fangirl or nothing like that or whatever but that was cool like that whole experience of flying out to california them putting you up in a hotel you getting Picked up by, you know, car service, not Uber, not Lyft. Like, nah, you, you got picked up in like a Range Rover. And like, yeah, like. He went all like, out. I was like, this is pretty legit. So um, one thing about it, there's nothing you can do to prepare you for for that. Like when that clock comes on and that that time is like going off up there, and there is nothing. Like, and, and everybody can be a, a, a Monday morning quarterback the next day and look at film and be like, oh, you should have did this. You should have did that or whatever. Nah, nah. It all goes out the window yeah. once that clock starts. Yeah, man. Guy is such guy is good. Like he he gave us like the most amazing pep talk. I was ready to run through a wall. And then like as soon as the light came on, you lights come on, you turn into a potato again. So <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> that that that's amazing. Um yes. so that that clock goes on. Uh -huh. Um your mind shuts off, but sort of what Take us through that moment when, you know, that clock goes on and you start cooking. What, what what goes through your mind? When I tell you I practiced so hard for that show, like I we did stuff that probably the average person wouldn't have done or whatever. Um, like I know Lowe's food is tired of me. Food line is tired of me because like I was all in the grocery stores, like running around. Mm -hmm. We was making our own challenges and stuff like that at home practicing. Like we had we had friends and family come over and like throw a mystery ingredient at me and like see if I can make something with it or whatever. And that's like, that's really what I love to do. Um, I've always wanted to do Hell's Kitchen and um, I've actually became like pretty good, pretty good friends with one of the chefs from Hell's Kitchen that's been in the Greenville area a good bit. So um, that's one thing. That's, that's one thing I, I would probably like step out and say, I really want to do is Hell's Kitchen, something like that. Chop would be cool, but like, I, it's nice to be in the farm system now of like food network and like from, from talking with the producers and stuff like that, like once you're on one show, they kind of like to, you know, keep you in that phone book and like invite you back and do other things. Like whether you win or lose, like they like to have you in the system. Dang. So I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, the whole time I was pitching, I was like, you looking at the new face of South Carolina. Like <laughs> this, is, this is the new face of South Carolina, baby. So that's going to awesome. put Greenville on the map. huh? Yeah. I mean, Greenville's pretty much already there. It's more of like representing Greer as like, like like holding it down for Greer because people always ask like why are you in Greer and it's just like I mean Greer chose us like we we gonna hold it down for Greer like that's that's where we at like I want to be a part of something up and coming 
Greenville's very established mm-hmm. and they've they've done their thing. And we get a lot of love in Greenville. That's why we just put an office in Greenville. So we get a lot of love down there. That's awesome. So what I guess what's the best outcome that could come out of being on the food network and you know said you want to be on Hell's Kitchen and, and do mm-hmm. some of those things. You try to get on more shows? Is it mm-hmm. try to just kind of promote what you're doing here or a little bit of both? Uh, I mean, 100% a little bit of both. Like, my, my wife is basically my manager. <laughs> there you uh, go. She, um, you know, we just we just hired a, a new marketing team and stuff like that that's, like, really going to dive in deep into, like, our social medias. Um, I have a team. We have teams that have took over our social medias and stuff like that. So um, they're going to start promoting Chef Michael. And that's what they're working on is Brandon Chef Michael because we've already built White Wine and Butter. Like White Wine and Butter is pretty established, pretty established here locally, and I mean in surrounding areas too. We do some traveling. Like we don't, we may not post every single thing we do for a reason uh, because of some of the clients that we do, we do um, events and stuff for. Um, but we we travel, we do a lot of things, and the next step is definitely like promoting Chef Mike. So I got to get a TikTok, and I don't like TikTok. <laughs> I don't. You gonna like be doing TikTok. some dances? No, I'm not. I'm not doing dances. I don't know if the if the numbers right. I might. I might do, <laughs> yeah, right. I might do a little. Well, a little depends, whatever step. Your depends manager, on how many zeros. Whatever your me. manager yes. tells you, you're yes. gonna do. <laughs> like I, I keep hearing it's like, uh, yeah, we gotta get this TikTok going or whatever. Like Instagram's fine, Facebook's okay, but you need a TikTok, and we got to start making videos. So. We have a photographer that comes in and shoots us in the, in the restaurant, takes pictures of food. She's actually coming with me to a private dinner Sunday, and uh, she's, like, super excited to get some behind-the-scenes work of me doing private dinners because, like, our private dinners have been, like, ultra-private. And now people are, like, starting to recognize me. Like, I go to a grocery store, and people are recognizing me, and it's just like, that's kind of cool. That's but, really cool. Like, I won't if, – if I'm not in, like, my, my white wine and butter gear, that's kind of like me saying, like, I'm chilling, y'all. Like, I'm, I'm good. But <laughs> – like if I had that white coat on, like pe- people like Chef Mike, white wine and butter, butter and wine. Like they they always get it wrong, but it's okay. They, they get the butter and they get the wine part. They got so part of it going. They, they get part of it going. What what's some of like the the best events that you've done? Whether it's the food that you got to cook, the people that you were around, or, or just a combination of both of those. Oh man! Uh, most recently, we did family meal uh, for the restaurant because restaurant just opened. And that's that's like one of the things I want to focus on is just like, you know, our culture and our restaurant and our company in general. And, you know, when it comes to restaurant, people in the kitchen, like we're at long hours, like super long hours. We're eating out of court containers. We're eating out of boats, wax paper, all that stuff. And I want to establish that, hey, like I care about y'all. Uh, I want to change the narrative. And like, I want to have family meal, like, like, let's dress up like y'all, y'all put some, put some clean clothes on, you know, like get, get clean. We're going to sit down at a table. We're going to pull plates out. I'm going to make food for y'all. And we're going to sit down as a family and like eat dinner together. And let's just like go around and talk about, you know, a little bit of work, but mostly like, let's talk about each other or whatever. Like, let's like, what makes you go in life? Like, what are your goals and stuff like that? Like, we want to offer like, um, you know, like financial literacy classes to our staff. We want to offer retreats and things like that. Like we have really big goals for our, for our company and, you know, things like that. First of all, that's a good event for us to do. Um, we just did the Renaissance Festival, Upstate Renaissance Festival in downtown Greer. Um, that's our second year doing it. I don't know if you know anything about it, but it's like uh, turkey leg, turkey leg, turkey legs and turkey legs. <laughs> so um, that's stressful. It's fun, but now we've realized that there is a big following for it. If you didn't know, a um, couple Saturdays ago, it monsooned outside. Like, it was, like, hurricane threat level rain outside. Uh, we pretty much went into that event thinking that we were going bankrupt because of how much we put into it. And I was like, man, nobody's coming out here to eat no turkey. Nobody's coming out here to eat no fries, stuff like that. But... Uh, afternoon it actually cleared up like everything opened up for us like we had lines like deep deep wow. out there people were still out there dressed up i was like this is we're we're on to something like this is good like we've 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 built something really good here to have people you know come out for this event come out for the food cuz people come out for the turkey legs too not only they come out for the event but they come out for those turkey legs and my goodness the amount of labor that goes into making those turkey legs <laughs> People are just like, why don't you just buy them already smoked and just put them on the smoker like everybody else? I was like, that's what everybody else does. Yeah. That's what everybody else does. So, um, you know, other than that, um, I love doing our private events. 
that's like really when you get Chef Michael. It's like exclusively Chef Michael. I I come to your house, uh, prepare dinners, and like we almost got like a little Chef Michael fan club. Like we've had repeat repeat people coming coming out for uh, private dinners, and like it's just they wanna they wanna show up their friends next and whatever. Like oh we had Chef Michael do this. She's like oh yeah, well we're gonna have him do this. <laughs> so like I was like whatever. Like I can do whatever y'all want. Like y'all tell me what y'all like. Let's do it. So. Um, the the mystery dinners are my favorite dinners to do though. That's and, like, awesome. People know that, and we we promote that on our website. We promote that in our booking and stuff like that. And it was just like, here's a list of stuff that you can order if you want chicken, potatoes, and all that stuff. If you want a really good experience, here's the price. Let Chef Michael come cook for you. That's awesome. That's my favorite thing to do. It, on the business side, how has it been? You know, being a small business owner and entrepreneur, and you know, doing it with your with your wife and your family, and, and kind of mm-hmm. growing that. How's that been? Any tips for for people looking to do the same thing? Yeah, I don't recommend it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I definitely don't recommend it for everybody. Um, one of the hardest things we did we we got married, uh, we brought a house, and we started a business in like the same freaking week I mean, it wasn't a week it wasn't a week but we did all that in like the same time and like we constantly told people this is not for everybody we don't recommend it for everybody like me and my wife we have really good board meetings um we we talk and we go over things and like we we establish like boundaries and lines like that and she comes from a very successful family uh that ran businesses her uncle ran a snowball snowball business in uh, new orleans like million dollar business and like what if with us building our company and stuff like that, we had several conversations with them. So we we kind of had a cheat code of like the resources of people we could reach out to. And not only that, like the people that grew with us, um, we did a lot of training. We did a lot of stuff growing. I didn't know nothing about business. All I knew was cook. All I knew was chef. And like I had to start reading books and stuff like that. Like I, if I was reading a book, it was like a cool magazine or something like that. Like, no, bro, you got to start reading like business management books and like like personal development books and stuff like that. So like we really attached to this, this upstate group of entrepreneurs and it was just like a big community of people who had their own businesses. Um, and we, we were the babies in that, in that group. And like uh, everybody just says how much they saw, how much we've grown to get to where we got to right now. And that's just a lot of dedication and hard work. Like, super late nights studying and just following suit and listening to like what these millionaires tell us, like listening to what people who've already done it, tell us to do. Like a lot of people have already made mistakes and they don't want to see us make those same mistakes. And if people see that you actually have to drive, you're hungry and you want to like be successful, they'll put in work with you. And that's what, that's what we had. Like we, we did it ourselves. We did a lot of business coaching. We paid a lot of money for it too. So yeah, that's awesome. I mean, one thing that I love that you hit home on was it's not for everybody. It's yeah. not. I mean, you said you're working eighty hour weeks. Like, you know, you got people, you know, moaning and complaining about working yeah. a forty hour week and getting a nice salary. I yeah. mean, I, I kind of the same way. Young entrepreneur. Uh, me and my wife got married young, bought a house. Yeah. You know, in the in the finance industry, it's it's tough, man. It's not for everybody. And I, I love that you said that. I think especially in, in the younger generation. And even with TikTok, like you said, you got people that see this success and they're like, oh man, I can do that overnight. You know, I'll mm-hmm. be a millionaire tomorrow. And unfortunately mm-hmm. it doesn't work like that. No, no. Uh, if you're not, if you're not putting in the work, it's, you know, it's not going to, not going to get a good result. No, it's really hard for food to make you rich. And the thing about that too, is like, we're not, we're not in it to get rich. Like we're, we're in it to make a difference and stuff like that. Like we want to help paint that picture of hope, especially uh, with, with me, like just seeing things like, I never thought I'd be able to, you know, buy a house. Like I never really thought I'd be able to buy a house. Like seeing, seeing like that growing up in my family, like my sister brought a house for the first time. And as she's like, I've watched her growing up, you know, my whole life pretty much or whatever. And like, well, if you can do that, then I can do that too. And like, now it's kind of like reverse roles. Like my sister just watched me open a business and she's like super high on getting her business going now or whatever. So that, that gives you that hope. And that shows you that like, if you see it, you can do it. And it's it's very possible. It's very possible. I love it. So we have a signature question that we ask all our guests, and it's uh, what makes you tick? Okay. Uh, Ooh, I like that. Um, One thing for sure I can tell you what makes me tick is, you know, just being in my element. Um, As a chef, when I'm preparing food and, like, I make a dish and I, I pass it to you, and the, the main thing I look for is you take that that fork, that spoon or whatever, you put it to your mouth, you couple chews and you do that. 
<laughs> I mean, that means so much more than anything. Like, and, and I preach that to my staff too. It's just like, when you see like the joy that your food can bring to somebody, when you have people come up to you and tell you like, oh my God, that's like, I, I don't eat lamb and that's the best thing I've ever had. Like, I don't eat eggs. You just made me eat eggs. Uh, stuff like that. When you have people, you basically like changing people's lives with food because you can touch people's lives with food and you can associate that with emotions and feelings and stuff like that. Like if you you smell bacon at seven o'clock in the morning, that might remind you of grandma. You smell like biscuits in the oven. That'll remind you of home, things like that. Um, you know, like your mom used to make a casserole. And if you're able to like tap back into those flavors and provide a dinner for somebody who hasn't had their mom's casserole in X amount of years and they take a bite, I was like, whoa, that reminds me of home. So now you just attack like all those senses and like you're really like taking over their central nervous system with food. <laughs> That's like so amazing. Like I, I love that just to to see how I can, you know, provide that experience for people through food. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, super excited to kind of see where it goes and, and you know, come over to Greer and try it. I mean, it just sounds awesome. Yeah. What's the best way for people to, to follow you on social media, uh, to come visit you in person and, and just figure out what you're doing over the next couple of years and follow you? Yeah, definitely uh, stay in, stay in touch with us on Instagram. Our Instagram is real heavy on like posting reels and that's going to be like white wine underscore butter. And then you can find us on Facebook. You type in white wine and then white wine and butter, you'll see it. You'll see the B. Like our, our logo is pretty dope. Like you'll see the B pop up and you'll see um you'll see my 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 face, the face of South Carolina <laughs> pop up as well. And that, we're really gonna push that, the new face of South Carolina. <laughs> That's we're, the we're slogan. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna really push that. Um you'll see that there or whatever. So uh we have we also have our website too, whitewineandbutter.com. We handle all inquiries there. Uh, you can see our menus there, anything that we do, what we got going on, updates. We have a newsletter as well. All that stuff is on the website. Uh, TikTok coming soon. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> you're going to be on TikTok doing dances here in a couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, our marketing team is going to make a TikTok and I'm going to have to do a little dance. Food Network something. Channel too soon. Yeah, so, so. Uh, we're definitely going to be, uh, check me out, we'll, we'll be on Food Network. I haven't got the, the date release date yet, but I am season 33, episode 6. So we plan to do a release party and like make a whole thing about it. I'm actually became like really good friends with one of the chefs I worked out there with at Food Network. So we plan to like do a whole big thing and, you know, invite the chef back and we'll, you know, have a little have a little throwdown and, you know, like a little friendly throwdown. Yeah. Um, Keep us updated on that. I'd love to love to come yes, see that for sure. For sure. Be a part of it. Um, and we had a very unique episode, too. We didn't like our episode was so cool. It's not even like one of the regular episodes. So it's like a special a special episode. So I, I'm really looking forward to it as well. And um, that's really it. Yeah. Awesome. We thank you so much for joining us. You, you know, you, we thank you for doing what you do inside the community and, and yes. continue to grow Greer and, and Greenville and, and the surrounding area. So thank you for that. Um, we thank you all for watching Connected by Community, brought to you by Ballantine Capital Advisors. Please like us on social media, all the platforms. Go out and uh, check out Chef Mike as well. Uh, till we see you next time, go make our community great.